rolling. Watching Eclectica. I am Michael Seven. Michael, we've got CC the Geek, the Greek Geek, actually, and we've got our main man. That's right, Drew, calling all the way from the West Coast, keeping it so so fresh and so clean. And of course, we've got Sensei Vegan, aka Charles. How you doing? Very well. A little tired. So this is our official. Before we had like a little intro. To the Iron Fist. This is our official <laughs> review of Iron Fist. We've seen it all, right? Everyone's seen I, the whole series now. Nope. I, have you guys seen the whole thing? Because I've I seen it. have nothing but spoilers in it. Oh, you can ready. spoil it, dude. I made okay. it to seven, and I was fighting. I'm like, I had no urge to finish it. I'm going to finish it, but it's like, it wasn't like when I watched um, Luke Cage, and it definitely wasn't like when I watched Daredevil or even Arrow. I was just like, after the first three, I was like, wow, this is not too good. Just good. Give, give, me, give me one second, guys. Hold on. Hold on. You do so, it. Yeah, so I, I had no urge to watch that thing. Man. Netflix. I just randomly was just going through, you know, my movie collection, my DVDs and Blu-rays and all that. And I just blind picked through a couple, you know, choice selections. Uh, Game of Death. Okay. It's an odd Bruce Lee movie. But since you guys blatantly ripped it off in one of these episodes of Iron Fist, I'm assuming you guys know it. Uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Done by uh, Yuan Wu Ping. He's a legend in the industry, as is uh, he's known for this one as well. You know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This little gem, Iron Monkey. I love this movie. It's one of the greatest Kung Fu Wuja flicks ever made. Oh, speaking of one of the greats, Ip Man. Awesome freaking movie. It's like, man, the choreography, the timing of everything, it's freaking great. The Raid Redemption, you know, if you want to get that nice, gritty, gory, brutal, in your face action. And um, I'm noticing that none of these movies had any influence in anything that you made for this entire series. I find that really curious. Another thing that I find curious is uh, for a show that's called The Iron Fist, had a hell of a lot, nothing, like next to nothing to do with the character. Just one, one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let's see, we got, uh, ah, yeah, just in my little wall of weird back here, there's uh, Iron Fist, the Ed Brubaker, and um, what was the other guy, Matt Fraction run? These are really great. It's like pretty much the idiot's guide to Iron Fist. Evidently, your research for this show went as far as Wikipedia, and that was about it. Because I got a whole lot of Danny Rand telling us I'm the Iron Fist. You can make a drinking game out of the number of times he says, I am the Iron Fist, sworn enemy of the hand. You could make a drinking game that would have most people, sans hardcore alcoholics, down for the count. Okay? In the first five what minutes. What happened? What happened? the hell happened i had to force myself power through this series while studying for midterms while getting next to no sleep <laughs> while not eating for days <laughs> on end okay yeah. to watch tell him why you're mad son right. <laughs> the that was. bummy ass choreography bland sleep inducing dialogue characters whose motivation basically just teleported like goku doing the damn instant transmission what happened scott buck what happened like <laughs> charles what did, i mean oh, no. you you only got to like episode seven why did you yeah, there was pause the, the characters from when i watched the seven none of them cemented their role in that series i think the only one that sort of did their thing was claire because she was Typical Claire, so you knew what she was gonna do. Everyone else was just like floating around, man. Claire was yeah. Claire, she's typically good. Like Rosario yeah. Dawson, if you give her the material, you direct her. She's more often than not good at what she does. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll even go as far as to say Finn Jones is capable of being likable as Danny Rand because when he had moments where he was just being like a dude, like you know himself, he was fine. Fine didn't pass, but fine is fine enough. For what we have the character that i've been spending the last few days just really kind of pull well, two characters right let me rephrase two characters that i just had nothing but contempt for okay ward meacham that walking just 
you know, clunk of a character, yeah, okay? Awesome. And Colleen friggin' Wing, who is arguably the most <laughs> irritating and unlikable character I've seen in any Marvel show yet, okay? When she's not being a smug prick, she's being a sanctimonious douchebag, and then you kind of pepper that in with moments where she's just getting all doe-eyed, you think I'm cute? Yeah, I think you're cute between her and Danny because we have to have our obligatory romance. And, you know, because Danny has all the necessary Aryan traits to merit a connection, you know how girls do it, like all of a sudden I'm supposed to believe <laughs> that there's like something between them, you know? And I'm just like, shut up. Shut up. Pop quiz, guys. So <laughs> wait, wait, just, just slow down. This man is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a grouch. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. I'm. I am not. At no, all. Let him go. Let him go. Uh, <laughs> but, Chana, would you would you date Danny Rand? Is he, is he believable? Believable? Whoa, that's <laughs> like just because of the way he looks. I mean, no, I mean just the just the character. Do you buy into the everything with the whole Danny Rand? I don't know. I'm, but I'm hard to convince. Okay. I don't know. I'm. I'm. They I'm need to work this on. book, man. They need, like we say, they need to edge his beard up. They need to <laughs> shave his hair up or something. Charles, yeah. Me and you were talking like he needed to shave this, this the Bohemian New York yeah, man. look. Okay. Whoa. <sighs> well, one thing I think we said off the air, with, um, which I think is very interesting, if he really lived amongst the monks. And he had so much respect for the monks and how he was living, he wouldn't have any facial hair. He, in fact, he would have a baldy. It's well, so it made it, no sense. You're not wrong, but the thing about that is, is that he'd spent X amount of time um, traveling, going from Kunlun all the way back to the states. But even still, it's like you see the few scenes that we do see of him in Kunlun. Mm. He has all this. Right. Still there. Yeah, so dude. maybe they're just more lax. But in the comics, they do have a little bit more uh, freedom when it comes to that stuff. Again, we wouldn't know because we didn't see the friggin' place. Everything we that we heard about, about Kun Lun was an exposition, right? Yeah. We have maybe two or three scenes over the entire friggin' course of the series where we actually are there in that place. Right. And it's but just. Even most of the time they showed it. It's like he's sitting on the side of a mountain. So they really There's didn't a mountain. show. Yeah, the, 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 he looks so face. small. Right. Him and Davos there, sitting dude. on a rock, looking yeah. out at nothing. And I'm just like, great. Thank the, the magical, mystical city of Kunlun. Thank you. Thank you, Iron Fist crew. The, wow. <laughs> you've blown my mind yeah. with the, 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 the fantastical landscapes that you can forge right in front of me. That was great. And then you have the action sequences, mm -hmm. which I'm just like, I've seen, I've told you guys, I think all of this at some point. I've seen Power Rangers episodes. And I'm, this isn't even me being like hyperbolic or exaggerating. I've seen Power Rangers fight scenes that were better than this damn show. Yeah, like, bad. I'm sorry. For all of her smug douchiness, right? Mm -hmm. Unless Colleen was fighting a typical standard issue garden variety meathead in a cage match or her own students. You guys notice how anyone who's like kind of just even above average with martial arts could kind of put her on her ass? Did yeah. you guys notice she that? That was her best looking scene was when she was in a cage. When she was Bruh. in a cage. I and think that fight choreography was just drab and dull too. Oh just, my goodness. Both fight no, both cage matches, I believe, ended with her just wailing on somebody. I'm just like, I could have just turned on UFC and seen UFC. that just a little bit better. <laughs> Dude, I tell you one of the worst sequences when they were using the weapons, man. He used the nunchuck. I was like, dude. I can't even use nunchucks when I can use them better than that dude was using. I'm like, are you? Oh yeah, I love, yeah. Was I, I, awesome, love that, I love that part where he's using the nunchaku, and she takes it. She has her little three second. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, god, you feel amazing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it was bad. And to answer your question, he does not look believable. I'm looking at. He looks so small. Like, did he beef up for this role? Like, he doesn't look like he's supposed to be like a Luke Cage type of character, but. Here, well, okay. In the comics, they, of course, exaggerate certain features. I'm okay with his size, considering the fact that Shaolin monks, if you see them in real life... This is that is life, true. They're not all uh, yeah, bulky, they, boxy, yeah. oh, my God, look at my eight-pack. Some of them do, but yeah. for the most part, they're very lean, and also that has yeah. to do with a lot of their diet. They okay. even... They, if it's one thing, and I guess they did freaking cover properly in this series, was the fact that they have a very... What's the term that I'm looking for? 
austere, strict diet where they eat mostly vegetables and sometimes they eat meat. They right. did reference that. So it makes sense that he would kind of be like more on the lean side. He right. donkey. So does he, he have facial donkey. hair in the show? Or he ate donkey. He... <laughs> <laughs> he ate the donkey. Of uh, all the meat, he ate donkey. Okay. I, did, uh, I got a pop quiz for you guys, though. Really quick, though, because I know there's other things that we're going to try to talk about. But who was the main villain in this season? Well, I don't know if I'm going to the right this, answer. They the show didn't know. They <laughs> trapped themselves with the hand. I mean, that whole organization, and I think that was just a really bad step, man, because they just cemented themselves into that freaking thing. Oh. Okay. Now, that's what they said. On paper, yeah, you're, sh you're showing me the picture of Misham 7. They didn't know that at the beginning of this season. <laughs> they said, okay, we don't know who our villain is. Is it the Meachams? Is it Ward? Is it uh, Madam Gao, who was the only, the only thing I made a post on social media and Facebook. I'm just like, Granny Gao, you are my tether to land in this typhoon of disappointment. I swear on everything, she is one of the only enjoyable things on this show. It's not her, of course, yeah. because she's actually fun to watch. And good Old lady there. with the big shoes, man. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't Granny Gao and her big adorable shoes and her one Buddha's palm, get get the F off me. But, no, it her. wasn't her. It wasn't, they didn't know if it wanted to be Davos because he shows up like in episode eight or nine or whatever on mm -hmm. some last minute. By the way, Danny, I'm really salty that you left Kun Lun. I'm not going to show you why I'm salty. Let's not show you how our friendship formed over these many years. Let me just tell you how angry I am and let that be enough for the audience. And then you can remind us about your title as Iron Fist. Again, for the umpteenth friggin' time. For a million times. <laughs> um, <laughs> even with um, Harold Meacham, you know what that reminded me of until they, until they knocked him off, until they snuffed him off? It was almost like in Smallville when they had Lex Luthor's dad and Clark Kent, Clark how they had that whole, oh, yeah, you're like my father figure, then then he would go behind his back and do some freaking dirt. Uh, Stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, another highlight of this series. You haven't gotten there, Charles, but whatever. You're Dark not here. Highlighted, man. So in the last big battle of this season, okay, we got Danny Rand fighting against Meacham. They ultimately settle on Harold for some reason as being the main villain. Okay, fine. We had options. You went with one. <laughs> the Iron Fist first season finale fight was him and Harold Meacham. I crap you not. Hitting each other with iron pipes. All right? Iron like like a beam or whatever it was. Like iron pipe and Meacham bucking off shots with a gun. That was Master of Kung Fu, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Iron Fist. I think that summed up the entire show perfectly. Just like two dudes beating, trying to beat the bricks off of each other with sticks and some <laughs> and some gunfire at the end of all things. This show, man, it was. Dude, they could have had their pick of top notch choreographers to come in and do these fight scenes. Yeah. And they 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 just took the easy way out, man. I gave I yeah, gave them the show. Good. This show was tailor made for it to win. At least with me. I don't know how like no, it, it, people took it. It could like, have. You could have messed up just about everything else on this show. And I would have been okay if you'd given me excellent choreography. Like, you guys had every opportunity to succeed after three shows which consistently weren't bad. You had the door open, and you just completely... Never walked through it. They could, like I said before, they could even went the safe route and had him come in with another show, whether it was Jessica Jones, whether it was... Right. Daredevil, have him come in like they did to punish her, but have him come in whooping some ass. They could add him doing that and highlight his fighting and then take it from there. They didn't. They I challenge. No, I challenge that theory. I think Iron Fist could have worked great as a show if you'd made it 50-50 or maybe even 40-60. Half his journey, his trek through Kunlun, and why we're actually supposed to root for him as a freaking hero as opposed to being told in 80 different exposition scenes... And then half would have been him back in New York handling the business aspect should have been Jaron Hogarth. Carrie Ann Moss was bad. criminally underutilized in this season. Like sh all the board meetings that we got, because you know they gave us plenty of those over the course of the season, plenty of people sitting in rooms debating about their shares, okay? That should have been Jaron Hogarth, right? 
Meanwhile, Danny Rand, who finds out that the hand is involved with the Rand Corporation, which pisses him off because as they, you know, told us in the series repeatedly, he's been indoctrinated to basically fight this whole group. He just holds all of them as just like, you know, the evil of the world. He came home to find out that his father's company was being run by these guys. He'd be proactive. And instead of having him walk back in his little hipster, you know, attire, oh, my God, look at me, guys, I'm so rough, like, have him come back in his monk uniform. And that monk uniform he uses as a disguise while he's fighting, maybe he gives, like, some Kevlar. I told you this, Charles, over, over yeah, the, yeah. Before, before the show. Give him, like, a Kevlar vest. Give him, he's like, oh, but I also got to hide my identity, so I'm going to rock this Zorro thing. You can even have a throwaway joke. I gave you a free one, <laughs> Netflix, more a Marvel like, you could have had a throwaway line where it's like, yeah, there's a green uh, Zorro that's knocking guys out on the roof up there. Like, give us one of those. And that's how you have his first iteration of his outfit that he then has to tweak and change and alter to become like the Iron Fist over the course of the season. Not this, oh, we didn't know what to do with his costume, so we just left it out crap. Like, mm-mm. That's interesting. I'm curious when they had the, the, the board meetings, the writing meetings, uh, because pretty much everybody does the same thing. It's like, oh, Spider Man. Okay, you so you slow. Okay, you see the development of the outfit. You see all these different characters. One one thing that won with a lot of people with Luke Cage is Luke Cage was just Luke Cage. Like you know, there was no outfit. So maybe they tried to emulate that, but it doesn't really work with the lore of the character. While Luke Cage, it does. Luke Cage, it worked. Yeah, they even managed to give a, a little shout out. Call back to, to the original, his original, uh, yeah. his original uh, his little cute, adorable blouse. Chain and a little... Uh, yeah. Chain and the tiara. <laughs> they even managed to put that in. Why? Because they actually gave a crap. That's yeah. why. Like, the, oh, the most Iron Fist crap that you saw over the entire course of this season is the little film reel where it was taken from, like, what was it, the 40s or something like that, where you saw the previous Iron right. Fist taken on Nazis who could have been Hydra. If they were smart, they would have made a little nod that, yeah, this was Hydra trying to invade Kunlun in 1940, whatever. That was right. it. That was it. Both fists were glowing. You know, he wasn't on this one. That's another uh, thing, uh, too, look. man. He only had one of his fists. I thought that they were going to try to level him up where it's like it starts off as he only has the one. And then by the end of, like, the last fight, which it should have been Davos, I feel, because for some reason we're supposed to know that he's going to be the Iron Serpent by the end of the first season, even though there's no investment made in his character whatsoever. He starts off with the one fist. He develops his skills. By the last fight, he learns how to switch both of them on. And then he officially becomes the Iron Fist. Right. How am I fixing your damn series for you, Netflix? I'm it just doesn't, you. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, the series makes no sense. I just don't see how you can screw something up so bad. I really don't. Easy. easy. I don't so understand easy. it. Because usually Marvel gets it right. They normally do it right. I don't understand how you can take this character. Everything's laid out. All he needed Screw to be was just a callback and homage to all the great Wu Jia Kung Fu flicks that have ever been made. You may have been able to even get away with him not even being in New York until the very end. Yep. That whole season could have taken place in Kunlun. And then another thing, too, while I'm on it, because my, my dander is just up tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay. How dare you show me Show Lao the Undying? How dare you tell me that there's a dragon in the show that I don't see but his little eyes? Like if you did, if it was a budgetary issue, it's like, yo, Scott Buck, we can't give you a dragon this season. They could just be like, all right, well, we'll do this. Remember that kid that we saw in the first season of Daredevil, right? What if we made it so we come to find out that Sho Lao, the ancient dragon that can't die, that you have to kill and dip your hands in and take his power, what if that actually took human bodies as vessels? It was the spirit of a dragon that would take occasionally the body of a human. So you have a scene. Where Danny walks in, you hear the breathing, you hear like the fire and all that fly jiggy crap, right? He walks in, and it's not a dragon, but it's a person. And then he has to kill this person. Again, why am I fixing your show for you? It was interesting, <laughs> too, because they, um... You should send them a freaking bill. <laughs> they, they... they by the hour for this, right? Like, oh, I just... <laughs> he talked about it so many times of all the fights that he had. It would have been interesting... Drew, um, I mean, it's a little scary because you don't want to go into Arrow territory where you kind of keep living in this present and past, but he literally could have just kept going to awesome fight scenes of him building up, becoming Iron Fist. 
They could have, but at the same time, we do recall that Arrow got three good seasons of him being in the past while he was still on the island. Before it became to the, I spent five years kind of, sort of, on an abandoned island, but I kind of went off and did, you know, stuff and saw my family low-key and right. was in Russia and all these other places. Right. But the first three seasons were consistent. Yeah. Iron Fist as a show could have worked if you divided it 50-50 into him being on Kunlun and him being back in New York. Right. That's, that would have been fine. It's, it's, it's going to be, I don't know, man. It's going to be tough to kind of fix this thing. They could do it, but it, it's going to be tough. They yeah, cemented yeah, a lot of well, stuff, man. Apparently, yeah, they did pick it up for a second season is what I'm hearing so far is the early word on that. I'd still, I will, you guys will get sick and tired of hearing me say this if you haven't already. Iron Fist and Luke Cage just need to combine and become a buddy cop superhero drama called Heroes for Hire, where you have also, if you need her, add in Colleen, whatever, and then have my girl Misty Knight show up. Okay, because they also take over and have their own team, team up thing going on, right? And that would be great. That would have completely freaking worked, and it fits the mold. You don't even have to leave the city because majority of their stuff takes place in New York. Like, fix this. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, um, David Wenham did. I think he did a pretty good job as Harold Mitchum. Um, he, was fine. he 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 did he did what the script told him to do. You know, right? And they didn't give him a hell of a lot much if you really stop to think about it. He's right. doing random stuff for no reason. Oh, I want to bring Danny into the fold, but I don't want to tell him too much. For all the random meandering that his character kind of does, motive wise, he's fine. If you give him the material, he's typically a solid actor. So, what do you think of his kids, the um, actors that played his kids? Okay, Jessica Stroop and uh, Tom Pilstreet. You guys go ahead. I couldn't stand Ward. Joy was okay. I liked Joy. Her. Joy to yeah. me was like one minute she's like, "Oh, Danny, my friend," then you throw his ass in a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was a shiesty friend. And then you throw him in the psych ward. She oh, and I, I, I kind of want to give her a pass for that because her character was her whole thing was conflict with her. She was divided between her loyalties to those that she considered close to her and her family, and her position in this company. And again, they tell us this. They don't show it. It's like she had to do very morally gray things in order to maintain the company, right? Which I can understand. You're a woman working in a, a typically male-dominated, you know, environment, and you had to make some tough calls to make sure that you could do what the hell you needed to do. That's fine. You're also conflicted because you love your dad and you thought he was dead. He comes back and you don't know quite how to feel about it. And then you're also conflicted with your brother who is, I can't say the word, but it rhymes with cuff toy. You guys know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. He's, he's a complete nutter cuff toy. And, <laughs> and, I love it. I and love you're it. trying to look out for him as well. Okay, I can understand. So she at least had a bit going when it came to her inner conflict because you get the vibe that she's not a bad person. She's actually a good person. And when she realized that it was Danny three episodes in, like we didn't already freaking know that it was Danny Rand. Three episodes in, she's like, okay, this is Danny. We have to take care of him because he's family. Yeah. I can't I can't mess with you on that one. So oh. could could we do a quick re recap of the um, for anyone that didn't see season one and if I they missed it? To an enemy of the hand. Done. That's the whole season. Well well, <laughs> no, Drew, I think you're you're selling you're selling people a little short, Drew. You you gotta go through the whole thing. So um let let let's do it. I'm Danny Rand. I'm Danny Rand. I'm the Iron Fist. Uh, I'm Danny Rand. Hey, I, I don't you, like you. I will tell you how difficult my kung fu training was. <laughs> there was pipes and fire. Right. And danger. Oh, oh. Kung the thunder. Oh, flashback. Just take my word for it that it was really badass and really difficult and really tough, and I almost died and lost myself so many times. You don't need to see that. Right. Just take my oh, word. Don't need to see and it. and the number one line that made no sense, that repeatedly showed itself within this fictional world that we're supposed to believe is, oh no, let's not go to the police. <laughs> that would cause too much problems. Or, oh no, let's not go to the complete police. We can't do that. It would take too long. Let's handle it ourselves. Yeah, because we didn't spend three episodes keeping him in the insane asylum trying to figure out whether or not he was Danny Rand. Right. Because we needed to take that long. Oh, my so goodness. The minute that they were like, 
Do you guys remember, uh, those of you that saw the, the series, right. in episode two, he's talking to the psychiatrist or like the therapist guy, right? And he's just like, there was this time we were filming this commercial for the Randor uh, Corporation, mm -hmm. and I was mad and I was salty because I didn't want to be there. And they took me to the circus afterwards, wherever the hell they went, right? Mm -hmm. The minute, the very minute that Joy was able to corroborate that and be like, yeah, that is where we went, done, it's Danny Rand, we know it's him, that's it, that's all the proof we need, like... Ugh. They, yeah. they, this yeah. rubber banded a lot of stuff. They stretched band, it, exactly. stretched, to the point it, it stretched it, stretched it, man. Yeah. yeah. It snapped. It imploded in its own amount of suck. It what was a singularity it? into on into itself. Now, <laughs> now, because there's some characters that kind of weave through, um, I would say Carrie Ann Moss's character was very interesting because... I liked her. You know, they build her up as this crooked woman of the law in um yeah. jessica jones and in iron fish you get a different view of her character well okay i wouldn't even really go no that i would all right i would say that she does some crooked things and jessica mm -hmm. jones especially when it comes to the, when she takes the baby fetus mm -hmm. and she low-key like keeps it that was shady however there are multiple levels to jaren as a character which is what made her interesting in jessica jones because you see the gr the the grimmer aspects of her character, mm -hmm. yeah. and then when she comes back in Iron Fist, you see, oh, but she's not a complete scumbag because she's helping this kid out, and there hasn't doesn't really seem to be any ulterior yeah. motive aside from the the yeah. usual. So she's an interesting character, and in that you right. can't classify her as good or bad. Right. And we need a lot more of her. Again, they completely underutilized her in this season. If you have Carrie Ann Moss in your cast, you better do a freaking thing as Carrie Ann Moss. So uh, I think a lot of it they didn't really know so what to do. They had her start fighting. <laughs> oh wow! She should have busted out the Trinity <laughs> outfit, man. Oh, <laughs> man. Trinity outfit. Give me a throw some. She sounded like there. the Give only like good part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they gave her the least, you know. And when so you sad. yeah, the, the, <laughs> one of the few times where you do see any semblance of like genuine character in Danny. It's when he's with her, trying to call her J-Money and give her a hug, and she's just like, no, 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 just stop. We stop. don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that, yeah. Don't touch me. We're good. Right. I'm going to help you. Back, back. Fall right. back just a bit. Right. right. Personal space. Yeah. Personal right. space. Uh, and Claire was fine. Like, I'm trying to get more into the positive now, if you guys haven't mm. noticed, now that I've gotten all that mm. out of my system. You had a good soundtrack, though. Um when it was there, yeah. like yeah. when it was there at the beginning, yeah, yeah it was fine. And little iPod music was all right. Yeah, but you know what? Even with her character, obviously they made a de a decision early on that she was going to be the 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 connection between all these people with um gifts. But the writing was so bad. If you took Claire out, it it would have been fine. And that that's where you know it, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of characters in this that didn't need to be there. Mm. I, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I definitely start with Colleen on that one because she I felt brought nothing to this at all. Like, 